Welcome to the Tailoring Talk Show with me, your host, Roberto Rivilla. I'm a bespoke tailor, menswear designer, and owner of Roberto Rivilla London Suit and Shirt Makers. This is the show where you drop in for the threads, but often leave with something quite unexpected. If you haven't already, please support the show by subscribing. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please help me out by leaving a rating and a review. It helps other people to find the show and helps us navigate those pesky search algorithms. I'm going to just apologize in advance before I introduce my guest. Uh, I have got COVID finally for the first time ever. Uh, saying that like I'm proud of it but um, I'm obviously not it's just one of those things but it has knocked me for six the last couple of days and uh, it means my voice is a little bit all over the place so I do apologise if I'm not my usual bouncy self Um, but uh, our guest is going to more than make up for that he's a wonderful individual that I met A couple months ago, actually, at an event in London, his business is extremely interesting. It kind of ties nicely in with what I do. Uh, He's a fellow creator, business founded only two years ago and is based in Basel in Switzerland. I am joined today by Nico Manoni. Nico, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. And Nico, your company is Per Noir. Did I exactly. say that right? Yeah, well, it's a French fantasy word. Um, so it's pronounced French, Per Noir. But basically, it is a mix between uh, Italian word, Per Noir, and French Noir. That's why I hesitated when I said it, because I know that the root of your company name is the Italian Per Noir. Yeah, Per Noir is very French sounding. First of all, how did you come up with that name before we get into what you actually do? Well, so the idea behind our brand is to create or do perfumes for a small circle, so for perfume connoisseurs. And so that's why Pernoy, which means for us, so for us, the circle, but also we want to create olfactory personalities, as we say, the, each personality has different facets. And we want to create perfumes for these facets and personalities. That's how we come with Bernoy. And our branding is black and white. So the packaging, the website, Instagram, everything is black and white. And that's how we combined Bernoy for us in Italian and Noir in French and to the fantasy word Per Noir. Yeah. Now, and how did you get into this business? Because this isn't something you've been doing your entire life, is it? That's right. So I have basically a business background as well as my co-founder, Robin. And so we have been into perfumes the last 10 years. So um, about 10 years ago, I bought my first like special niche perfume that was Aventus. So during, now it's a high perfume. During that time, like it was very unknown. And yeah, it, it's kind of a new world for me about emotions, stories, and I was very fascinated about it. And that's how Robin and I, yeah, um, were trying new perfumes and get into the world. So it started like long, some years ago, yes. I know how important smell is now. I mean, obviously all five of our senses are very important when put together, but I was at an event recently, um, we were at a tasting, a place called Kitchen Theory in North London. And the chef there, Joseph, is an absolute magician. It was a dining experience, but it was a sensory dining experience. So the idea is that all of your senses came into play when you were tasting each course. At the beginning, before we actually sat down, Jason, Uh, had us in small groups at a table and uh, he would set us some little sort of taste challenges but then one or other of our senses would be shut off so the one I remember distinctly was that he gave us a jelly bean and it was a green jelly bean so a green jelly bean you're going to assume it's probably lime is is probably the the one that springs to mind right so you know before you put it in your mouth you know what it's going to taste like 
But then he also gave us a peg for our nose, a clothes peg. So we had to put that over our nose and that immediately shot. So I'm doing it now. That immediately shot the, the nose off. And we didn't really think anything about it because you assume when you're tasting food that all your taste is with your tongue. So we put the jelly bean in our mouth and we're sort of just chewing and can get maybe a little bit of flavour. And then after 30 seconds, um, Joseph said, take the clothes peg off. So took it off and all of a sudden the rush of flavour that came into the mouth was absolutely incredible. And apparently something like, I don't know the exact number, but like 70% of, um, uh, of how we taste is actually through smell, not actually through the mouth, which I found absolutely incredible. But it just goes to show just how powerful our noses and our sense of smell are which makes what you do all the more interesting because smell is not just about taste. It's also, I mean, smells can remind you of certain memories or of certain people or certain experiences that you've had in your life. You can walk past someone down the street who might be wearing a certain fragrance and it reminds you of a certain place or person. And so mm -hmm. I, when you and I first got talking, I, I found what you I kind of clung on to you because I found what you did so so fascinating and doing that at a bespoke level because you do that at a bespoke level for in for individuals but also for businesses as well yes well so I can give you two interesting facts about what you just um, told me so number one um, the nose the sense is connected with the long-term memory of the brain and also interesting is that the nose is a hundred times better in memorizing um, the memorizing sense than the other senses. So this is quite fascinating. And as you told me exactly, so basically we have like a perfume collection. Um, we sell online, but also we have a lot of partners across seven countries for the moment. And, but also what we can do is for example, bespoke fragrances for individuals. So, um, we have to find out what you like, who you are, your personality. We ask you a lot of things. <laughs> but also what we can do is bespoke uh, fragrances for ambience. So um, we have now um, a partnership with um, with, with an organization in Switzerland with um, the most um, best rated um, hotels. So we also can offer a bespoke um, home fragrance, for example. So we are the experts, everything regarding scents uh, and fragrances. Amazing. So you take a similar approach to how I, to the, the approach that I take with, with tailoring. Um, because when I get a customer in the workroom for the first time, I ask them so many questions. I want to know everything I can possibly about them. Like, you know, person, I'm, well, obviously I'm trying to learn their personality whilst I'm with them, but where they go, the people they hang around with, what they like to do, where they travel, where they like to socialize and, and what their personality is like, how they want to project themselves to the world. And then I take all of this information and that obviously goes into how I put together a style or you know create their clothing or make recommendations for them and so on and it sounds like you're you guys are doing exactly the same thing so that when they're wearing a per noir fragrance it's not really a per noir fragrance it's actually a i mean if you were doing it for me it would be a roberto rivilla fragrance because it would be completely tailored to me in every way that you possibly could exactly exactly um so we want to be known for our perfume collection of course so we have like Mm, the ones you see online but also we can do like some tailored things because at the end as you said every person is individual and so we also can create something very individual so maybe someone likes something green you know as a color but it is also um as an interpretation of sense something green um but it can also be woody it, it depends on the occasion on the situation on the emotions um as you said 
question, question, question. And based on that, you will find the perfect perfume uh, for a customer. I'm very interested in the process there because obviously you have different ingredients that are going in. So different, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe herbs and spices and mm -hmm. other sort of scent flavorings. I'm trying to relate mm -hmm. this. I'm thinking of food as I say this to you because <laughs> obviously food is something that I can get to grips with. So how are you, because you guys are like, I, I kind of imagine like you and Robin being in white lab coats all the time and like constantly <laughs> with little pipettes and syringes just experimenting with different fragrances and flavors and so on and you know kind of stumbling across things that work and like kind of fill me in as to how that all sort of works yeah sure so the thing is i mean robin and me we are not chemists so we have um support from that side in the creation part Mm -hmm. from a chemist from a perfumer so it's not like that we mix the ingredients but just to make examples how it works so usually robin and i we create a concept so if it's for our collection for Pernoir, yeah we have a concept for example the last one tierra um the concept is we want to create an elixir of happiness because we have been to colombia in south america and we have seen like the passion the fire in the people we want to create to bring that happiness into a bottle of perfume. And we launched it in November because in, you know, in Europe it's cold, people are depressed, Modi. I want to make people happy with that perfume. That was basically the idea. And the other thing was while doing that, my father drinks a lot of rum, so he loves rum, but I don't drink <laughs> alcohol, but I like to smell alcohol. And then there was that specific rum I really liked. And I thought this might be a good fit for our concept, for our South America concept. So I went to Robin, to my co-founder and said, smell to this rum, it's like amazing. And so he liked it also very much. And he also, he doesn't drink alcohol. So we, we are both alcoholic free. And so, yeah, what does that mean? So we went to the perfumer. And so in the first set, we created a rum chord. It's like music, you know, you have different notes for the perfumes. Yeah. And if you mix different notes, you have a, a chord. So we created our own rum accord that it smells like our rum. And of course, um, we also wanted to have more uh, South American style. So, you know, um, you have a lot of woods there. You have a lot of spices. You have also fruits. Um, and so we created, we, we put a lot of South American ingredients in the perfume to have, um, yeah, that concept fits also the ingredients, you know. And so usually you, you have some prototypes and then maybe you have three, four different kinds of prototypes, different di directions. And then you are going to work on one prototype and do like uh, the details. Okay, you want it more uh, woody, you want it sweeter, um, depending on your concept, how you want to do it. And also interesting was that we had a very sweet rum perfume in, in the first round and uh, second round and then we said okay we want to have it darker so what we thought about it there is a specific um wood or um and malacca core called oud this is a very known ingredient and so we took we sprayed on the blotter the, the 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 prototype of the round two and just put it quickly in the oud and um, a cord in and then we smell it and say, okay, have it, you know? And it's like, okay, it's also a bit about feeling. So what your gut says and you go to this direction. So we never have a goal, you know, the perfume is not, we have a specific goal. It's just, we follow our gut, our senses, and then we end up with a hopefully great perfume. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting you use the music analogy. Yes. Really interesting. <laughs> Because like you yes. were talking there about that particular fragrance, you decided you kind of got it to a level where it was good, but then you wanted it a little bit deeper. You said darker. Yes. So in yes. music, you might say deeper. So you wanted to add more of a bass note to it. And to add a bass note to a perfume, then you'll go for certain types of wood. Yes. A certain type of wood. Right. Okay. That's amazing. Wow. God, this is so fascinating. <laughs> 
But then when you, when you, because, so again, you mentioned a few minutes ago, you said that, uh, so for this particular fragrance, you wanted it to be, uh, to invoke the spirit of South America, that sort of happiness and to bring cheer to yes. people through the cold months and so on. Mm -hmm. So, so when you start with a concept, and let's just take this example, so happy, joy, cheerfulness, and so on, mm -hmm. is it, some of it, I'm guessing, is part of you guys testing different combinations, and then obviously you sample those. And can it be as rudimentary as as you kind of taking a smell of something that one of your chemists brings you and says, hey, Nico, Robin, try this now. And you kind mm -hmm. of just take a little sniff, and then mm -hmm. suddenly you start smiling. And then you say, ah, okay, this is where we're going. Yes. This is joy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so usually we also show it to um, to our friends, to family. We know some influencer very good, some perfume shop owners, and we show it to them because at the end, I mean, of course, it's the passion we want to have. We want to create like very unique, strong perfumes, but also there is some business aspect. So we have to do some we do some market research about our prototypes, what could be, what fits the market and whatnot. So we have to look a bit for sure for business purpose, but in general, we want to do something very special. And yeah, so this is also an important part of it. Definitely. Yeah. Now you go from a product that is very colorful um mm -hmm. when you think about smell and so on there's a lot going on and when you smell certain perfumes fragrances i mean they should bring to mind some at least some of the ingredients that have gone in you know whether it's certain spices or certain types of tree or fruits or whatever so very very colorful but then on your branding packaging and so on you've gone down the black and white route what was the because that's obviously quite a contrast there what was yes, the reasoning yes. behind that all aside from the fact that it all looks absolutely amazing by the way like i Thanks. i personally love what you've done with your branding and the other great thing you're very very consistent across everything that you do which is very Thanks. very important um, but sorry, anyway, that was going back to my question. So what was the what was the thinking behind that? Because it's quite a it's quite a, a contrast. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, we want to minimalize everything that is distracting for the from the perfume, you know. So if everything is black and white, you know, the perfume is like the colorful um concept, idea, whatever it is. And the other thing is we don't have a symbol for our brand. So we are our only one of the few brands that have has a symbol for every perfume. Why that? Because the perfume is a singular um, individual piece of art. And that's why we want to have to underline that art, olfactory art with a symbol. So re you recognize the perfume based on the symbol and what I also tell a lot of people is that, you know, I'm Italian and in Italy, when you talk about fashion, it's the cut and not the colors, you know, or the yeah. prints. It's always the nice cut. And maybe I'm a bit um, influenced by that, that we want to have like everything easy, but the, 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 the symbol is like the nice, innovative avant-garde cut, which fits to the perfume. And that's it. I'm really glad you said that because uh, I mean, even just the other, we're doing so many weddings at the moment because obviously COVID, the pandemic, people haven't been able to get married and so on. So we're very, very busy with weddings now. And what I try to, that's exactly what I say to people is that, look, you know, the, the fabric we give you, whatever you choose is going to be amazing. You know, in terms of colors, you know, we worry about that. But the main thing is, is that it's your suit does the talking and it is all about the cut. It's cut first, everything else comes afterwards. And I love the way, I, I, I totally get it now because um, with your branding, there are no distractions at all. And the symbolism that you use on each individual of your, your actual range 
So when you look at Tierra, for example, which I think is the one you were talking about that you developed, which was the South American joy, happy, etc. And Tierra in Spanish means earth. And the symbol, it almost, I mean, it looks like, you'll tell me in a minute what it is. I've probably got it completely wrong. But it, it looks like the sun and the sun makes everybody happy. And then the center of that, it almost looks like a tree trunk. And we associate trees with being very rooted in the earth. And so it does really sort of bring to mind what you're probably going to get out of that bottle of fragrance. Am I along the right lines there? Or have I just... Uh, well, I'm a bit speechless. I'm going to tell you something. First, we wanted to have a tree because um, of the roots. Is um, you know, this is a strong symbol for for a home for heart for feeling good so I, i'm a bit mind blown because we want to have a tree but not the roots but the tree like and um, if you see it from like front side you know not from um how you say it in english from the birds perspective yeah. um so and, and then um my friend said okay how about the sun and it is a sun but i like the tree so i always tell my my co-founder but it looks like a tree from the bird's view if you cut it you yeah. know and that's why it's so funny that you said that because i think just my co-founder my girlfriend just these two people know about this idea about the sun <laughs> and the tree with the roots so, so that is very interesting but you're right um it, it's a sun but I interpret it sometimes also as a tree um, and the roots. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. That means that it's working. I mean, my wife tells me that I am any marketing person's dream because she will sit in front of a television and when the advertisements are on, they just go straight over her head or she thinks they're stupid. Whereas me, I'll be leaning forward and I'll be like, yeah I get it I understand yeah like how can I incorporate this into my I know how to incorporate that into my life right how can I get this product I'm like honestly if I had an unlimited amount of money I would probably be the world's biggest consumer um but <laughs> <laughs> being serious for a second but but that's the the other thing as well because if you look at your your bottles and again the choice you've made with the whole black and white aesthetic it really does. I mean, it made me, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm into design, I'm into details and so on. But it makes you look and think about what the imagery is saying is inside. Because mm -hmm. then you take another one of your bottles. So I'm just going to do this literally off the bat here, and I'm not going to look at the explanation for it. And that's the other thing. You don't have any other explanation on your bottles. There's nothing on that bottle to tell me whether this is a fruity fragrance or something that's a bit more deep and woody it, it's, it's just the symbol and then per noir that's it so you know i'm looking at um let's have a look what is this let's do a little test here so this is vts right mm -hmm. and the, sh the shape of the design i'll put these up on 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 the instagram as well um the, the, when we when we publish this episode um so so immediately the shape is very evocative of Africa and maybe South America. My geography is a bit rubbish. Um, but then the, the shape of that symbol is pointing down and it looks quite sort of deep rooted. It almost reminds me of, um, of an iceberg. Uh, so icebergs are very broad in the middle and then they kind of peak at the top. But underneath, they can go down for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers until they almost got to get to a tip. So that reminds me of like an iceberg sort of penetrating through the ocean. So what I get from that is that this fragrance is going to be quite deep. It's going to have quite a lot of bass notes to it, but it's also going to be quite um, sort of aquatic and fresh. Um, I don't want to say Davidoff cool water, but you know what I mean? It's got that sort of aquamarine, you know, that kind of sea breeze feel that you get from being on the ocean. Right. How close am I? Yeah, very close. Um, so the thing is, it's a muscle, you know, and 
the thing is, so when we create this symbol, it should be not like you have to look twice as it that you understand yeah. the concept. It's not like, oh, it's a tree or it's a muscle or whatever. It's like um it's also art and you have yeah. space for interpretation. And it's a good point about the deepness because uh, it's an aquatic perfume indeed. And usually what's the problem with aquatic perfumes? They are very linear and the perfume, the smell stays the same for the for the two, three, four hours you have it on the skin. So we wanted to create a fresh aquatic perfume because we love this kind of perfumes, but we want to have some deepness. And that's why it's called Vitias because Vitias is the deepest point in the ocean. We want to create this deep perfume. And so also we have some woods, we have some musk, we have some ambergris. And so you cre can create a great base, um, which is very deep. So um, we have also an evolution, which is not um, usual for an aquatic perfume, uh, which evolves great on the skin. And so you're absolutely right that it has some deepness um, in it. You said something there that got me thinking that mainstream perfumes and fragrances do tend to stay at the same rhythm for the length of time that you have them on the, on the skin. And I remember you very kindly gave me your sample set when we first met. And I'm eternally grateful, by the way, because I've smelt even more amazing than I usually, usually do ever since. <laughs> but what I found with particularly there was one of them and I don't know what it's called, but it starts off one way, but then it seems to evolve and change the more time it spends on the skin. Now, firstly, I don't know how you guys have done that and I don't know what black magic is involved, but I'm guessing that that, that was very, very deliberate as well. Yes. So um, also we think it's always very interesting to the evolution on the skin um so it might be mazar so usually all our perfumes have a his story to tell on the skin and an evolution but especially mazar we have like the greatest evolution on the skin so it starts very a bit spicy but very sweet with the tobacco with the vanilla with the honey but then you have more smoky notes more lapdanum and at the end, it's also very animalic, woody. You have so damn sandal in it. So, for example, Robin, my co-founder, says he likes Mazar after a half an hour, an hour the most. Because these kind of perfumes, you need to try them on the skin. Yeah. And it will not be the same after an hour. Um, so try them on the skin. And we want to have that evolution for sure. God, there's so much I want to ask you in so little time. So, so we've we've kind of been talking really Mazar, Tierra, etc. That's kind of your the, the range that anyone can buy. Um, we touched on the bespoke service that that you can offer. Do you do much work with corporates? Because uh, we talked a little about this when we met. Smell can influence you, and when you're talking about consumer behavior, brands do use fragrance to manipulate I, I don't want to use actually it is manipulation so we'll call it what it is <laughs> to, to manipulate the way people think and their behavior and so on right so uh, I remember the example you gave me that I think it was Starbucks who um yes uh, who pump a very faint note of um like you think you go in there and you're smelling freshly roasted coffee but a percentage of that is actually a fragrance that's being pumped through the air vents at you. Is that right? Yes. So um, scents will be more important um, in branding. So that's why scent will be a part of branding. And for example, uh, in, the, in some great hotels, um, you smell it always the same. So for example, Merit's hotels, when you go to one, you have... It doesn't matter where in the world, it smells always the same. Um, also for um, different kind of um, restaurants, um, for example, also Starbucks. 
where they diffuse, for example, coffee aroma in the air. Um, so they do this for different kinds of reasons. So one reason is, of course, um, because with the most, with the nose, you remember the most. Um, so it's part of the branding, but also it increases the well-being factor in a store. And at the end, which is the most important thing for most companies, is that um, you generate more sales. And it's all about um, well-being and the sales, of course, as well as the branding. I'm no stranger to starting a business at what other people think is the worst possible time. When I worked for a very big tailoring firm, I left during the financial crash in 2008, around that sort of time. And a lot of people, friends, said that I was absolutely crazy to leave a secure job and go off and start a new venture. But we did that. And then a couple of years later, I basically then moved on again to launch Roberto Rivilla London, which again, people told me was the worst possible time. And then we've just basically, out of necessity because of the pandemic, more than anything, we kind of launched Smart Casual, tailored Smart Casual through 2020, 20, yeah, 2020, 2021. You guys launched in 2020. Now, was that just before the proverbial hit the fan? Or I'm trying to sort of pinpoint the time here and what your thinking was as, as an entrepreneur. Yeah, sure. So I give you some background information. So at the beginning of 2020, uh, so January 2020, I was working for Coca-Cola and they had to cut my position. <laughs> so I was um, jobless in February 2020. And then I was asking myself, what am I going to do with my life? And so um, for me, I always wanted to have my own company and be independent but also combine that with my passion. So I have a passion for watches, for fashion, but also for perfumes. But perfumes was for me always the most, um, the, the, the deepest passion out of all of them because it's, you cannot explain it. It's, you live those emotions. Yeah. And so I was one day in February, my co-founder was studying and working was calling him, telling him, hey, let's do a perfume business. And he was like, what? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, um, so we were talking a lot. And yeah, you heard more about COVID and so on. But we said, okay, um, let's do it. Because there, there, will, there will be no right time to start your company. I mean, there will be, I don't know, your um, pet dies, your girlfriend left you, or um, a lot of things. I mean, it's interesting. I lost my job and my girlfriend during that year, so <laughs> it wasn't the best year. I even lost two jobs during that year, to be honest. <laughs> and so, yeah, anyways, I mean, there is no right um, timing. And so we said, okay, let's do it, um, even though um, to not be able to smell anymore because of COVID. I mean, this is a factor more, not just the, eco uh, the economic um, factor, but also the biological factor. But we said anyways, this is our dream. This is our passion. We know we can create something. And as a team, you know, we are best friends since 20 years, but we are complete different personalities. So he's very creative, very social. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not, I'm antisocial, no, but um, I'm more rational, logical thinking. That's why we are a great team. And we said, you know, we are young, we can take a risk. Uh, we have a passion, we believe in it. And we just want to show the world what we can do. And that's basically how it started. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're absolutely right. There is no right time. There never will be a right time. You yeah. just have to... If you, I mean, you, you had the basics in place, you knew what you were passionate about, you knew that you had to do something and you just went for it. Mm -hmm. And that I take my hat off to you really, um, especially with everything that was going on around. And, you know, Lord knows how you must have been feeling inside with just the double whammy of, you know, losing a job, losing another job, <laughs> losing your girlfriend. I mean, you know, 
crazy. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> she's crazy. But 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 you went for it, and you've built this this wonderful brand. I'm super excited and very passionate about it. Whilst you've been talking, I've been trying to think of uh, of what a Reverse Revilla London fragrance would be like. Um, but maybe that's something for us to explore in in the future. Um, sure. Are you in? Are you over in the UK yet, or are you mainly in stores? Because I know that we, that that you can yeah. buy your fragrances online, so you do ship yes, over here. Yes. Yes. Are you in stores over here yet? <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you yet. Um, if you're not, no, don't worry. No, 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 no. We are finalizing. Um, we will soon be in the UK at uh, in London at uh, Les Santeurs. It's uh, in Elizabeth Street. Mm -hmm. um, so I was uh, when we met. I was um, visiting that store and amazing people, great perfumes. I mean, uh, not. I mean, ours, of course, soon, but the other perfumes, for sure, also um, a great smells. So, um, yeah, I think in about three to four weeks, we will start to be there in London. And that's also exclusive um, Père Noir at Les Santeurs. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Are you going to be coming over for that? Um, well, I hope so. Um, we still have to figure out how we're going to launch it and what to do. Um, but, you know, um, not just for business, also personally, I love to be in London. I love the city. It's, it's like, for me, it's one of the best cities in the world. And the good thing is that in within one hour, I'm there. Um, so I will for sure come this year again to London. I don't know when, um, but I would also be happy to um, be in the store at La Santa to show the people uh, our perfumes and tell them more about our perfumes and what Switzerland brings you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, you have that very powerful combination because it's not just Switzerland. You have that Italian style, flair, innovation and passion. I think passion is probably the, the biggest ingredient and the most important ingredient you can have. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. It drives me to give more, to achieve more. It's, you know, we have so many ideas and we want to do all those ideas. And um, it's always, I mean, the best feeling about this job is when people tell you, uh, you have created something amazing or I love your perfume or um, yesterday, uh, one of our customers. So we are always very close to our customers. Um, so she has my phone number. <laughs> so we were um, messaging each other and she told me, yeah, you know, I have a lot of perfumes, but your perfumes, I cannot live without them anymore. And these are the reasons why we do that. That's amazing. Well, definitely when you come back to the UK, let me know. OK, I mean, we'll, sure. we'll try to keep you in close contact. I know that you're very busy. We're at this transitional phase at the moment. So um, I'm, I, I can share this with you on the podcast. I don't, you know, I don't care. You know, some of our listeners are our clients and some of our listeners aren't. But we're at this kind of transitional phase and I'm trying to really nail down the DNA of Roberto Rivilla London and, and what the company is all about, the types of clients that we want to serve. Because obviously, like any business, we all want customers, but we all want customers of a certain type. So we're we're just really trying to work out the not just the DNA of the business, but also the the DNA, the personality type of the customers that we love to work with. And this is eventually is going to end up creating what I've got kind of forming in my mind at the moment as the sort of hashtag RRL club. So it's to kind of create that sort of feel because uh, you know. Our, our clients, by and large, mostly know each other or are connected to each other in some kind of way because most of our business is done on recommendation and referral. I, I just I, I just somehow want to kind of grasp that sort of club feeling and cultivate it in a way. But it, it then sort of starts to seep out into everything that we do as a business. And you're talking about the, the branding 
the branding is fine. I think we've got it to, to where it is. I mean, you'll you'll tell me what you think of it when you when you I don't know if you've had a look at it, but um, but at some point you'll tell me what you think of it. You know, things like packaging and just all the things that the clients experience and touch and feel and see and eventually smell is going to come into mm-hmm. it as well. That's where you come in, my friend. For um, sure, for sure. So, yeah, so we're, so th- this, for me, meeting people like you is very, very exciting because um, all of this was starting to go through my head when we were together at the Steinway Lingdorf event, uh, which was very poignant, actually, because you were coming in there from a smell point of view and we were there for a <laughs> visual and hearing point of view. Um, and what I do is mostly about visual and touch. I want to I want to try and bring in it's very hard I'm probably doing a very very bad job of explaining things and also I have a high temperature because of this COVID thing and so my brain is probably all over the place let me give you an example Nico one of my new clients came in to try some clothes on for the first time and he has had a problem finding things that fit in exactly the way that he wants them to for his entire life he's very successful uh he's a company ceo he tried his clothes on and i opened the door to the fitting room and i said hey how are you feeling oh my god the smile his he didn't need to say a thing the smile on his face the look in his eyes his body language the way he just suddenly opened up told me 95% of how he was feeling and then when he spoke that was the rest if he was a fragrance if he was one of your fragrances he would have been tiara he was full of joy if that is what our best customers feel when they interact with us i i want as we develop the brand and take it to the next level I want every interaction with the brand to have that same feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I get your point. And also, um, when I show my perfumes to some potential customers or partners, potentials, um, I spray it on the blotter, for example. I show it to them and I look them in the face i don't say anything i i want to see their emotions you know yeah and it's about the emotions and you know you can lie so with your mouth you can say something that is not true but with the emotions it's not possible so that's why i'm like quiet and just look them in the face yeah that's what i always say to customers i always say when you have your first try on don't worry if you're not sure, because when you look at my face, I don't need to, I won't need to say anything. My face will tell you yes. whether <laughs> I've done a good or a bad job, right? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> but the, the emotion yes. is so, so important, really. Yes, it um, is. Nico, I'm really, really excited. I'm very, very happy that I now know you. I'm very happy that we got to have this chat today. Um, I hope that we can do it again. Um, sure. I will be as available as I can for any opportunities to hang out with you, especially when you launch in a few weeks' time. I really, really hope that goes really well, and uh, I hope that you're able to make it over to London sooner rather than later. I'm also excited to potentially look at possibly collaborating with you and uh and also just helping you in whatever way i can because i think that what you've got here is so so special and knowing you as a person and just knowing how much passion you have i know that your business partner robin must be equally as passionate as you this is something that people really really need to experience um so i will make sure that we have all of your links on the show show notes and they'll also be shared out nico have you had fun today yeah for sure i mean that was my first podcast i guess oh congratulations so uh, i'm honored uh to be here and yeah also if someone of your listeners want to know more um um they can send me an email you have my contact details so 
um, very open to answer all your questions or more questions. And yeah, it was a pleasure um, talking to you again uh, after this event. And for sure, I mean, we are always open for collaborations and maybe for my private life, I have to come to you for a suit or I told you about my uh, jacket that doesn't fit me anymore, you know, too much training, too much food. And now <laughs> I got a bit too big. But anyways, um, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Nico, we'll be in touch soon. I keep looking at your branding because I've got it in the background. Sure. And uh, I, I keep seeing things in my mind, like between between Pernawar and, Ru and Roberto Rivilla London. So for everybody sure, just, sure. just watch this space. At some point in the future, something's going to happen, I promise you. Nico, thank you for ever sure. so much. Thank you too. That was episode 38. Thank you so much for joining us. Nico was such an amazing guest, so passionate, so earnest. He was an absolute pleasure to spend time with. As I said, that's it for this episode. And thank you once again for joining us. As I said, probably at the top of the show, please remember to subscribe and review. You can also click the share button in your player to send the show on to people you know too. We're now on Instagram. If you've not heard that news already, you can find us at Tailoring Talk Podcast. The feed needs a little bit of work, but we will get there over the coming weeks. You know I love feedback, so please also email me at tailoringtalkpodcast at gmail.com. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you on the next one. Brilliant, Nico. That was fantastic. Thank you, um, thank and thanks you. for picking up. We are not my new. By the way, I haven't lost my sense of smell because I'm That's just. Good. That was tea. <laughs> thank That's God. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can I mean, smell the honey and so on. Funny thing is that be two or three weeks before we launch our first perfume, Robin caught COVID and he couldn't smell the perfume anymore. <laughs> oh my God! What's the <laughs> worst two, thing for someone in your business, right? yes it is yes it is but um anyways yeah um at least our perfumes are very strong so even if you have a bit of cold you can still smell it <laughs> so um yeah um and even with the mask on you can smell it so yeah